So you just got a new phone and you now have the opportunity to download Diablo Immortal for the first time. Or maybe you just have a ton of time on winter break and you decide you'd finally give the game a try. In this video today, I'm gonna give you a complete beginner's guide for everything that you need to know about the game from day one. I'm talking about the very basics so that you can make sure that you understand the game because there is a lot inside of Diablo Immortal. The game is launched approximately, what is it? A year and a half ago now. I've been on one account, grinding the same account since day one and truthfully know everything about the game. So I wanna share with you what you need to know from day one so that you could be successful. And first things first, it's really about the campaign. As you can see, your character is gonna be leveled over time to very high levels. Notice my level is level 60, and then I have an additional 1,125 points. These are Paragon points, which you earn after you reach max level of 60. So what you need to do as a new player is enjoy the campaign. You play it once. I've played it once since the game is launched and I have never gone back to play it on another character. So enjoy it. Enjoy the story, the lore, and the learning experience from playing that campaign. Once you reach level 60, you then start earning one Paragon, Paragon point per level after that, which go into Paragon trees, which we'll get to a little bit later inside of this video. Some of the campaign is gated by your level, which you'll just need to progress on through. Don't worry about rushing through it again. Just take your time and enjoy the story. With this being said, there is a system inside of the game that gives bonus experience for players that are brand new. For example, as you can see right now, uh, the server Paragon level for all of us is 1,120. This goes up 10 levels every week. As you can see, it just went up this morning and I am still above server Paragon level at 1,000. 125, which means I'm only receiving 50% of the rewards that I would normally get to keep me from just advancing too far ahead of everyone. But if you are way below this, you'd be getting 1,000 times, 2,000 times, 3,000 times or more percentage for the same things. So for something that I gain 100 XP for, you could be gaining 3000 XP for the same thing. So there is a massive catch up mechanic inside of the game, which will allow you to catch up to players like myself in a very short amount of time. So don't be worried there, you will be able to make it again. Enjoy the game for what it is. Don't try and push yourself too quickly. Now, something else that's really cool about the game is as you unlock things, or as you play through, you'll unlock new gear and you'll unlock new skills. Now you're gonna have, let's take a look over here. You're gonna have two different skills that you could start with. You're gonna have Frenzy or Lacerate if you're playing as the Barbarian, which I am, and then all of these skills which will unlock over time. As these skills unlock, they are permanently unlocked at the max level. You never have to worry about upgrading them or grinding them through. So once you unlock a skill, you can equip it and it will be available for you forever, which is a really great feature inside of Diablo Immortal. It's something that you don't have to worry about grinding and you will just always have. Now, something else is your gear. Notice that I have all of this gear that I'm wearing. I have my primary gear over here on the right and my secondary gear over here on the left. Primary gear are pieces of gear you're gonna find in the open world. When you don't hit Paragon, when you're you know still below level 60, you're gonna just wanna equip the strongest piece of gear you can find. They don't have any special skills, they don't have any special abilities. You just wanna throw on the strongest ones that you get. When you see green arrows up, you throw it on and then you're good to go. Later on in the game, you're gonna be uh, having the opportunity to get legendary pieces of gear that have different abilities with that gear. They'll give you different changes to your skills. So the skills that you have unlocked can be modified through pieces of gear. It's called the Essence System. And I'm gonna show you the Essence Transfer when we go through West March in just a little bit. So again, just put on the strongest gear that you can. You also may notice that in the beginning of the game, you only have one, two, three, four, five, six gear slots. Why do I have eight? Well, at Paragon level 800, you will be able to unlock stances. Stances inside of the game are gonna allow you to equip a second primary and a second secondary piece of gear. Don't worry about that until you get there. Then you'll be able to have additional gems, additional pieces of gear, and additional essences, which can essentially change 
how your gear and how your skills interact with the game. You also have over here your secondary pieces of gear. Again, whatever you find in the open world, pick up. These are green legendaries. Most of the time you find these through running dungeons or through running, um, yeah, or through events inside of the game as well. That's most of the time how you're going to get this. So again, you play to level 60, and once you finally do reach level 60, you will then start gaining Paragon Points. Allow me to show you what Paragon Points actually are. They're essentially skill trees that you unlock, and inside of these skill trees, you can get all of these different buffs. Notice there are a bunch of them. Let me get us back over there quickly. We have many different skill trees. At this point in time, only one skill tree can be equipped at a time. And new ones are always being added to the game. As you can see, a new one was just added to me this week. So I just started working on that one. But the skill tree that I choose to use right now is Treasure Hunter. This is going to give me extra rewards for playing the game in the open world and dungeons or whatever. I just get more stuff, essentially. Now, you'll notice that there are squares and there are circles. Squares are only going to work if you have the, the Paragon tree active. And you could only have one active at a time. So I'm only getting the buffs for all of my squares if the Paragon tree is active. But all of the circles on all of your Paragon trees work even if it's not active. So those are things like right here. Armor penetration, life, potency, damage, resistance. Notice, even if we go over here to Gladiator, it's not active right now. But I'm still gaining these buffs from any of the circles. So it's really important that you determine what you like best as far as these circle buffs. So I personally like armor penetration and I really like life and I like damage. So I'm gonna to try to go ahead and make sure that I have all of those circles equipped so that I can get those extra passive buffs just from having them equipped from gaining my Paragon points. Now keep in mind, you get one Paragon point per Paragon level. So it takes a while and as we said before, I'm Paragon level 1,125, which means I've put into that system 1,125 Paragon points. All right. Now, how do we upgrade? How do we level? How do we get the most out of our gameplay? And to be fair, guys, a lot of this is going to have to do with our Battle Pass. Now, there is a free tier and there is a paid tier of the Battle Pass. I pay for the $5 Battle Pass every single month. It gives me these extra lower tier of awards, as well as it's going to give me a cosmetic at the end of the month. And I quite like that. A free a cosmetic for five bucks, I'll take it every single time. It helps support the game and it gives me some extra rewards. So for five bucks, I'll get a cosmetic that's bound to my class. It only works on my one class that I'm using at the time. So right now I'm working towards this one. But every time you get battle points, these things right here, it's gonna progress your battle pass. Now, if you take a look right here, you get battle pass points from doing bounties, dungeons, elder rifts, the Haradrim, battlegrounds, all of these dungeons, the bestiary, all of these things will progress your battle pass. And as you progress to another level, it's gonna give you massive experience, which is gonna help you progress more quickly through the levels that we see up here. Now, this is probably already getting to be a lot. So I wanna kind of show you a little bit more of what we're looking at here. So let's go through, first of all, our satchel, our bag. In here, this is where all of your gear, your charms are going to reside. If you look at the bottom, you have different options. All of your gems will reside in the second tier. These are our legendary gems, and these are our normal gems. Legendary gems go in our primary gear, normal gems go in our secondary gear, the green stuff. And then we have our final bag, which has mysterious legendary items, wisps, which we could talk about another time, and all these different items that you may need for different purposes inside of the game. Trying to keep everything a little bit organized right there. You can also change your cosmetics over here with this tab, and you can kind of look at what cosmetics you have unlocked and switch to any of the cosmetics that you want to use. Remember, most of the cosmetics, not all, but most of them in the game are bound by your class, which means you can't use um, a skin or a cosmetic that you unlocked on a barbarian on a wizard if you decide to change classes. And yes, yes, you can change classes any point in time. 
that you want and it's free so i could change to a wizard today and then tomorrow i could change back to a barbarian no problem all of your gear transfers over with you it's very nice as well you also have all the portals that you could utilize as well that you've unlocked again mostly these are class bound and if you have the proper resonance you can unlock some wings i just have some baby wings on right here so i want to also show you just kind of what the system looks like so on the right hand side you have your shop every day inside of the shop they're going to give you something for free it's usually going to be right over here it's going to be a free uh daily pickup it pulls you into the shop right i typically don't buy any of this stuff i buy two things i buy the battle pass every month the five dollar battle pass which we just spoke of and i buy the boon of plenty the boon of plenty gives me a whole bunch of rewards it's all detailed right here uh, pet contract, orbs, legendary crest, and some fervent fang gems. But mostly I like it because it allows me direct access to the market. So when I do find gems in the open world, I could go right to the market without having to return to Westmarch to do so. That's that. But we have more. You got your skills where you could modify how your skills work. Those are right up here in the top menu. The paragon trees that we discussed, they're up there in the top menu as well. Heliquary is a game mode that I'm going to show you soon that uh, is going to allow you to unlock a bunch of these Void Blood Slag, which will increase your Heliquary. And from doing those fights, you'll be able to get these buffs as well, which are going to give you buffs to your overall stats. Notice in the game, I have increased combat rating, vitality, fortitude, willpower, and strength. These are all buffed because of my battles over the past year and a half in the Heliquary. I'm a level 55 right now. We've gotten, uh, we've made some good progress. More on that to come. Familiars are the brand new pet system inside of the game. New to me as well. They're actually pretty cool. We have different familiars that we can equip. They're going to give us different skills and passive buffs as well. I like to have the cat. Cat gives me a shield that keeps me safe when I walk myself around. And I additionally can have a bunch of other ones unlocked as well as you can see here we can have up to four other ones where i get some passive buffs from them as well there's a lot around pets and by the way everything that i talk about here today i have guides on specifically for that element of the game throughout the channel just search for them and you will find them all right let's get out of that and uh, let's look at the bestiary the bestiary is where you're going to turn in your monstrous essence when you find it in the open world when you get 10 of them, you turn them in. I will show you where shortly. And it's going to unlock pages of this book, which are going to give you just details of all the monsters that you find. The better thing is you typically unlock a legendary piece of gear and a bunch of experience when you do turn in that monstrous essence. Monstrous essence, if you're curious, they are these orange globes right here. You find them in the open world and you can turn in for bonus rewards, 30 of them per day. For good rewards, you can do unlimited amounts per day. Continuing here, you have your codex. That's gonna basically give you everything that you have to do. All of the things that can give you rewards, your conquests, your achievements, things that you can go do if you want to get extra rewards. It's a good idea to keep an eye on what's going on there. Leaderboards, if you're a shadow, all the shadow events, this game is about shadows versus immortals. And at some point in time, which is not right now, you will probably need to choose which you want to be. I would suggest doing shadow stuff first you have your clan your party finder and a war band which is basically a group of your best friends clan i suggest when you start the game join a clan that's a low level clan that you can just start with to have some guidance now let's move to the other side we have events and the activity calendar these are important the activity calendar just basically shows you what's going on throughout the day it's going to give you time so you can participate in things these will only be available if you've conquered that portion of the game in the campaign already but the events well they're important because they're going to tell you where you can get extra rewards for the day right now we have the phantom market going on brutal mean brutal uh brumal teen i'm sorry brumal teen is the christmas event where you can get rewards for doing different christmas things the phantom market is where you can get the cosmetic that i'm currently wearing these cosmetics are extremely expensive Approximately $170 to unlock all tiers of everything inside of here. But it's also really awesome looking if you do. I got myself the cosmetic. I got myself the portal. I got myself different attack um, motions and colors and things. An emote, a weapon, 
another skin, a weapon, another skin, a weapon, and another skin. All this approximately costed 170 bucks, which may be way out of your range and something that you think is dumb to do. You don't have to participate in it. They do give you one free draw, so go check that out. All right, then we have different events. Survivor's Bane is going on right now. These change all the time. Participate in them. Look what you're going to get. You're going to get the battle points. They progress your battle pass, which gives you more rewards. And every level of your battle pass is going to give you a lot of experience for that upgrade. Also, you can get yourself a mystery set item. This is the green legendary for your secondary gear. Important stuff. Next, we have another event, Splintering Dark. I've already completed it, which is awesome. The Darkening Plane is going on too, which is another event. And then we have Conqueror, which is the version of PvP. I haven't even participated in this one yet because there's been so many other things. Point being, it's important to just check out what's going on inside of the game so you can receive the most rewards for just playing it. Always make sure that you're participating in events if you want to progress your account, if you want to play as a strong player inside of the game. So that is essentially what the HUD looks like inside of the game. And as you're playing through this campaign that I've recommended to just enjoy, do it, enjoy the story and don't rush it. You get to do it once. Of course, you could start a second character and do it again, or you can revisit any of the zones to do your dailies, of course, but the story is only there once. You're going to find that you unlock West March. West March is the town where everything takes place. Now, every zone that you go into, and this is the world map right here, every zone that you go into has a friendly area where you can go and turn in stuff and, you know, a safe zone. But West March is, and it's right down here, is our main hub. I'm going to take you through all the places in West March. Starting from the north, we're going to start all the way down here by the gate. We're going to move up. And I'm going to take you all the way through everything here in West March. Hold on to your seats. Let's get into it. So we go into West March and first things first, we have our vendor over here. There's an event going on, Shady Stock right now, where we can get rewards for these items. Of course, that's an event, but you can also go to the shop. It is wise, once you can get legendaries, to start gambling, if you have the gold, for 10 per day. After 10, they get more expensive. 10 mystery weapons and 10 mystery primary armor. When you don't have legendaries, this is important to do because it's going to give you the legendary essences that you need to change your builds. If you don't have the gold, you don't do it. If you have the gold, you're going to want to bang this out. I'm not doing it because I basically have all my essences right now and I don't need to waste the gold. Easy peasy. Visit him. Do that once per day. Let's go right on over here, and this is our market. This is where we can go and buy and sell gems, legendary gems. Uh, you can get skill stones. You can even buy pets inside of here. You can also sell things that you have on the market as well, if you like. Uh, for right now, there's nothing that I want to sell. And sometimes you could even try out brand new gems that are here at the market. Now, I mentioned earlier that I purchased for $10 a month the Boon of Plenty. That allows me to access the market from anywhere that I want, anywhere inside of the game. So if I'm right over here, I can go to my satchel, go to my bag, I can go here and I can open the market and I can get there. It's quite convenient for someone that plays a lot and needs to get into the market all the time. I choose to pay 10 bucks a month for that. You do what's right for you. Charms, they are very confusing. Charms inside of the game are these items right here. They grant you buffs to your class. Notice I'm getting all these skill bonuses. It is a gotcha style mechanic that is frustrating and time consuming, but the charm system and the charms vendor is right over here. It's more of a system where you can destroy, salvage, upgrade, extract, and imbue. I recommend you check out my charms video if you want to know how to do this. Again, any of my guides, go to the main page of my channel and there's a search button right up there in the top. Click Echo Charms Explained and you'll probably get that charm video. When you get in a, a legendary item, you come on over to her and you click identify. And you know what? Oh, look at this. This has now been identified. I have a legendary item with arrows up saying that this is a really good one that I should potentially consider wearing. And you know what? Maybe I will, but not right now. That's where you identify any new gear that you get. Moving along, we have over here the essence vendor. Essences are where we manage all of the different pieces of legendary gear. 
Every piece of legendary gear that you get has an essence, which is essentially a skill modifier. And as you see, I have all of these unlocked for helmets, for shoulders, for chest pieces, for legs, for primaries, and for secondaries. These are all of the modifiers to my skills. They are what make your build unique. If I want to say, let's right here, my helmet is sprint is also leaving tornadoes in my path, dealing all this damage. If I want to change that, I could simply change it to any of the other essences that I want. So if I want to instead make my Wrath of the Berserker duration increased, all I need to do is choose that and click inherit. And then that skill that I'm getting modified from my helmet is changed. This is where you modify all of your pieces of gear. And if you want to change how your cosmetics look, you can do that through this system as well. Uh, these are not cosmetics. These are just straight up things that you unlock from the different skills that you have inside of the game and the pieces of gear that you find if you want to change things up. All right. Now, coming over here, which is quite new to the game, we have our pet vendor. Here you can do exchanging your pet's attributes. You can even go and do more contracts shops. You could buy your contracts three per week. You should if you have pets unlocked inside of the game, which you may not yet at this point in time. Once you progress 120, 240, and 480 battle points, you can spend 10,000 gold on each and get a pet contract, which you will then come over here and you will then try to unlock yourself a new pet. And I don't have any contracts as you can see, but if you did, you would click summon, you'd draw on the table, and then boom, you would be able to contract yourself a pet that can follow along with you and basically collect your gear and stuff and attack. Here we have the... Um, Let's see if I got it right here. No, we don't need that. We want to go to our Moonrite Flora, the Rite of Cleansing. Every day you're going to earn these flowers just from doing the game, progressing through the game, completing Battle Pass. Once you get five of them in here, you could begin the Rite. It's going to take you through a little battle sequence and you're going to get more rewards, which gives you legendary items. Again, I have a full guide on that as well. Moving through West March over here, we have our Jeweler. And this is where we do all the stuff with our gems. If you want to socket gems into slots, if you want to upgrade gems, if you want to um, craft gems that you can craft because you've been... Uh, actually, can I, can I craft this gem? Nope, we don't have enough of the items to craft it, which we'll talk about soon. But you can craft any gems that you have and do your upgrading slot gems inside of the secondary slots and the primary, again, gems they're going to change how your build works Nothing else I can help you with. all right you could also actually awaken gem slots if you take a look over here i have a couple of my gem slots awakened this means that i'm able to stick additional gems inside of my gems to get more power this is more of an end game feature not something to go in detail with right here but if you ever get to that point that is where you will deal with that you're going to be visiting your blacksmith all the time. This is where you get rid of gear. You salvage gear. It's where you can upgrade your gear. You can reforge the skills that your gear has on it. Uh, you could salvage remains from the heliquary. And you could deal with your cursed gear as well over here. Again, cursed gear is a little bit more of an end game feature. Many of these are. But mostly when your satchel gets full, salvage your gear. When you are ready to get your gear to the next level, upgrade your gear. That's a good tip I can give you right here. You're going to get stuck at points in the game. You're going to say, oh my God, I cannot get past this enemy. Make sure that you are upgrading your gear. Check it out. Level 21, 21, 21, 21, 18, 16, 18, even the secondary gear, 17, 16, 16, 16. Upgrade your gear. It gives you more power. It's going to help you push through those bosses. If you're stuck on a boss, this is the first thing you should be looking at so that you can make sure that you can keep on going. All right, we have our armory. I personally don't love the armory. The armory is where you can save loadouts and switch to them quickly. Um, I don't love it because it doesn't allow me to easily do that. And every time that I change a piece of gear, I have to go back and change it and then resave it in the armory. Now, do what you want with that. Here we have the Shifting Flames. This is where you can class change. If you want to class change to a new class, 
all you have to do is click on class change it takes you through this whole mechanic and you can then choose a new class try out different classes inside of the game there is no need to play multiple classes if you don't want to i could change right now to any class that i want i could even make them look any way that i want be any gender that i want so i have made one account one class and that's all i've ever played inside of the game because at any point in time i could revert or go to any class that i want we also have the barber right over here if you want to change your look you run into the barber you say hey what's up man i want to get a little customization to my character well you could do that right over here uh yeah there we go and you could customize how your character looks modify it even change gender you can go with your previews of what things look like. I can go to a female if I want to. And uh, yeah, that's it. So nice little touches right there. Exiting will discard. Yes, I do not want to change. I'm actually quite happy with my gender and how my character looks right now. So we're going to make our way up to this center hall. Now I'm going to actually go to the big map view really quickly so you can see. We're now right here. We've gone through all of this stuff. Now we're going to the center square. And in the center square, this is where we have Heliquary. Heliquary is a little bit more end game stuff as well, but essentially you're gonna be going into battle versus these big bosses with your teams. This is how you progress sometimes from one hell difficulty to the next. You need to complete uh, Heliquary battles. You could change what difficulty they're on. I'm currently playing on uh, Inferno 5, but you could play on normal, Hell 1, Hell 2. It goes all the way to five, six, seven, hell eight before you start getting into the inferno difficulties. These are all things that you'll progress through as you get deeper and deeper into the game and get more and more paragon. If you ever want to change your hell level, click on the map and there you can go right here and you can change the difficulty right over here. It suggests and recommends the paragon level that you have for that level. As you can see, you're probably down here in normal level one through 60 hell one is one through 79 then we're talking about paragon levels this is normal level one through 60 paragon one through 79 and you're going to kind of go through it's going to give you the requirements that you need and the things you get for progressing in through those difficulties all right we're going to move on a little bit deeper here and we're going to go up to a great area this has special events inside of here right now we have the Fractured Plane event, which is a great special event, not always active in the game. And there is also the Survivor's Bane, another great survivor style game that spawns in there. Again, these are not always active in the game. They come on a sequence. They come once in a while. So again, you figure out when those times are based on the events tab. Over here, we have another vendor and it's Christmas time right now. So all these Christmas trees are here. I suggest that you buy a legendary crest every week. You could buy this legendary crest here with platinum. Platinum you can get for free inside of the game, but it's also a pretty premium currency. If you play in a warband and you do those Heliquary battles, you can even buy an eternal legendary crest. Now there are two types of legendary crests inside of the game. And if we take a look at the shop really quickly, you will see that there are two kinds. These red kinds, which are regular legendary crests. You get them from bundles. You cannot sell the gems that you get from these. If you get a beautiful gem that has a lot of value, you cannot sell it for platinum in the market. But if I go buy a eternal legendary crest, they are 160 orbs a piece. Then these are sellable. If I get a gem that's worth 600,000 platinum, I could sell it, but not if I have a red one. So just so you know, the currency, it's approximately 250 per legendary crest. Now, what are they for? Well, you put them into these Elder Rifts right here. Elder Rifts are where you run through these gauntlets. You beat a bunch of enemies. You get to an end boss. And when you run with either rare crests or you could change it up and put legendary crests, then you're able to get those extra rewards, those extra gems. You're going to get these runes. These runes are what craft gems that I showed you with the jeweler. And you're going to be getting the fading embers. When you get 360, I believe, or so, something like that, fading embers, you can craft yourself a legendary crest, an eternal legendary crest, which is massive value. Over here, we have a different kind of rift. 
These are challenge rifts. These get more difficult as you go. The Elder Rifts, they scale to your difficulty. These ones here get more and more difficult and you will get stuck. But there is a point of playing these. You see these red things, or maybe they're actually orange for you at the level that you are. Cryptic Crystals, they are how you upgrade. They are the materials that you need to upgrade your secondary gear. So these green items right here, you need those crystals to upgrade these. Without them, you cannot upgrade your secondary gear. That's quite important. Make sure that you're doing challenge rifts and upgrading that gear. Heliquary, the, where you would turn in the bestiary, your monstrous essence that we spoke of, the altar for that is right over here. And very importantly, you get eight bounties per day. Eight bounties that you can claim and get massive rewards for. I suggest you do these per day. These stack for three days, which means you could have up to 24 bounties available to you. After that third day, eight bounties will be lost and you will not be able to get those rewards. So I suggest every day you do eight bounties. You t after every four, you turn them into Derek right here and he drops a whole bunch of rewards in the ground. Battle pass progression is gonna be huge. You have a bunch of gold and potential legendaries you get as well. And it's just the best way to get experience in the game. Here, we have the Sanctum. The Sanctum I run every single day. Now, I'm not gonna run it with you because it could be a little time consuming, but I am gonna show you what you can upgrade from running the Sanctum. It's actually not time consuming. It takes about three minutes to run the Sanctum. You basically run through a bunch of enemies, but you get a bunch of these. Uh, they're not gems, they're like jewels, I like to call them. And you put them into this shrine. This shrine, based on where you place these different jewels, notice they're giving me armor penetration, damage, potency, more potency, armor, armor penetration, and so on. We have the garnet, we have 272. We have the sapphire, 314, and we have 601 burl. Now, actually, let's see if I could actually use a green. This requires, nope. That requires the red, also the red, the green right here. I can gain some resistance. Let's do an upgrade. And notice it's giving me all of these bonuses right over here. This is to my character anywhere in the game. Let's do the upgrade. We're gonna get the upgrade to that slot and we're gaining ourselves an extra 18 resistance in all aspects of the game. Again, you come over here, you run the gauntlet, which is right through here, and you gain more of these items. You'll also gain Aspirant Keys, which are these items right here. You'll, they will drop four Aspirant Keys throughout your run. Collect those because they allow you to open chests at the end of your run. I have multiple guides about these chests and why they're important. I suggest you only unlock three per day. The first one's free. The second one costs one Aspirant Key and the third one costs two. This gives you a positive of one Aspirant Key per day, and then you get from other awards as well, Aspirant Keys. This will all allow you to do a full run of nearly 400 Aspirant Keys and get a bonus chest. Again, I have a video specifically multiple on that to get the most rewards out of it. Over here, we have another altar, the battle map. This is our Accursed Towers. Right now, we don't have any active cur Accursed Towers. This is a great passive way to gain experience throughout the day, a great passive way for you to get good rewards as well. You could run through different runs of the Accursed Towers. Unfortunately, we don't own one right now. It just reset last night, so I can't demonstrate for you, but that's where it is. It's a great idea to check in and get those rewards because it's free XP every single day. Now recently added to the game right over here past the bestiary. And let's go to the map again to show you where we are. We're now hanging out right over here in this center section. This is a training grounds where you can basically see how much damage you do. I can come and do a bunch of damage to these things right here, beat them up and it calculates all the damage. And I can really see how much damage my builds actually do. It's good when you're trying to theory craft and put together builds and see what's going to be the strongest, most brutal build that you can put together inside of the game. You then can get your breakdowns. You can see what your gems are doing. You can see what your what your attacks are doing. 
etc etc it's a nice new feature that was recently added and uh i like it because it allows us to just be a little bit more precise about what we're putting together now lastly we're going to head up here to the over in the top right we're going to be going up to this section right here which is the final section of the map this is the hall of ascension if you are an immortal which means you are very strong inside of the game you're probably not going to be there for a while i'm not even an immortal then that's where you're going to go the wall of honor right here is something that will show you who the current immortal are all the deputies and things like that really not the most important thing but it shows you who they are right there which is a nice little uh bonus if you are an immortal here we have the hilts trader i come here every day there i have multiple guides on what i purchase from the hilts trader as well you're seeing witnessing me do some of what i buy now every day you can go through general and then you could most likely go through limited time as well hilts are rewards that you gain just from doing in-game events and from participating in the game and you could spend them there at the trader and then we have battlegrounds if you want to do pvp Battlegrounds is a very pay-to-win element of the game. It is uh, difficult, especially if you are a new player or free-to-play. I would suggest, if you don't want to get the floor wiped with your bottom, that you play other events, such as, for right now, it would be Conqueror. This is a PvP element of the game that does not include any pay-to-win elements. So here you can battle real people and you could not have a bad experience. I personally don't even really participate in battlegrounds. I prefer to do other PVP modes. There are many. There's uh, probably about four or five different ones. There's a battle royale style mode. There is Conqueror. There's, uh, I forget the names of all of them, but there's about four or five different modes that cycle weekly that give us a nice pvp element to the game that don't require us to have massive amounts of skills uh, or energy or power things that we could purchase inside of the game my resonance is right here this shows how much power i get from my gems people that have more resonance essentially spend more money inside of the game which is what equivalates or makes itself um relevant in battlegrounds i don't focus on that whatsoever which is my why my resonance is fairly low. Why I don't have big wings, because your wings that you wear are based on your resonance. I have very small wings. Wow. That was pretty in-depth on how to get through the beginning stages of Diablo Mortal. The game is massive, and the game has so many things that you can do. So much fun that you can have inside of it. And you can do all of it for free, except for Battlegrounds. If you don't care about being number one in the world in Battlegrounds or being number one on the statistic boards for running your challenge rifts, you don't need to spend any money in the game. As I mentioned, I spend $15 a month. That gives me my battle pass, the extended battle pass for cosmetics, and it gives me remote access to the shop and a couple of other rewards that come along with it. I'm comfortable spending 15 bucks a month inside of the game, so that's what I do. Blizzard was generous enough to provide me with the cosmetic because of all the work that I do here on YouTube so that I can have a really awesome looking barbarian. This is a cross class cosmetic currently available in the market right now for the next two weeks if you, if you decide to jump on. This cosmetic is sick and I am very thankful that Blizzard hooked me up with it. Um, but I don't typically buy those things. But after getting this and seeing all the rewards we get, I may actually pick up the next one on my own. Decide what's the right spend for you. Maybe it's being free to play. Maybe it's spending five bucks a month in the battle pass. Maybe it's spending 100 to 200 bucks a month because you want to do more in the game. That's all up to you. But Diablo Mortal has been a game that I've been playing now for four years or making videos on for four years, playing for a year and a half. I know it sounds insane. I hope this guide helps you get on your feet to start out your journey in Diablo Mortal. All the end game stuff, the deeper guides are all living here in the channel, but this is for all of you that just started playing today and were a little bit confused and curious on how to be more successful inside of the game. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my daily Diablo Mortal videos. And again, guys, thanks for watching.